Check this out guys, Hangar RC is back with some more small scale crawler obstacles and I gotta tell you, these guys have helped me keep my sanity. Sometimes when I'm sitting in front of the computer editing and I've just been doing it way too long, I break out these obstacles here and just have a little bit of fun indoors. My favorite is the frame bender and the wave. These things will keep me entertained for at least 15, 20 minutes during my break and it's just, they're a lot of fun. So I'm excited to see what they've come up with now. We've got a couple different kits to check out. This one here is called the Valve. Uh, obviously it looks like two mountains they've got a bridge crossing between the two that looks like it's got to be a lot of fun looks like there's some building involved as well and then here is the pipeline this one looks pretty neat looks like we'll be straddling the uh, the rig across a couple pipes looks like we'll get a little articulation in there as well and then this one this is the one I'm really really excited about and I've actually got two of them it's called the mud pit and what you do is you build this up it's kind of got this box that retains some small BBs or airsoft BBs and you could drive your rig through a mud pit basically without it getting dirty it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun looks like you can connect them as well or you know drive two rigs side by side so I think this one's gonna be a lot of fun now these got to get built up obviously they're laser cut plywood sheets you got to pop them out of the sheet and then they're press fit together there's a little bit of gluing involved for the face plates that go on it, give it a little extra style so rather than you just seeing me punch out all this stuff and assembling it I'm just going to throw it all together right now all right guys so after about five or six hours worth of work I've got all three obstacles together and the valley is so big I had to go set it up over here on this workbench but let me just run through the build for you guys you're going to have to punch out all the parts from the plywood plates and uh, knock off you know some extra wood Wood bits that are stuck to some of the edges uh, for knocking out the small pieces. I just use the end of a screwdriver or a hex driver to push them out. But once you have all the pieces separated, you move on to gluing these decorative panels on the side. These are really cool. I just use spray adhesive to tack them down uh, to each of the plates, but they give the obstacles a, you know, a cooler look to them. And then you just go and push everything together. Now they got a video instruction course online. I unfortunately got these so early that those weren't up yet. So I actually built these by just looking at the little picture on the, the sheet that they give you. And I think I did a pretty good job in, with some of these obstacles. And with this mud pit obstacle, I wasn't sure which way these uh, vertical plates went for the ramps on each side. So I just kind of winged it and I think it actually came out good and you could actually go and maneuver them so you could change up the way the obstacle feels you know keep it interesting so the mud pit itself I think is my favorite new obstacle to have here in the workshop I'm gonna have so much fun with this and I just built one of them but you could go and add another one onto it to make it really long and be a lot of fun but I ran out of BBs so that's why I just have the one set up here this is so cool so obviously you got a little bit of a challenge coming up the ramp here and then you go into the mud pit area and they give you some plates to stack inside so if you don't have the BBs you could at least go over that but once you put the BBs in uh, those hidden obstacles underneath the mud pit uh, actually kind of divert the rig a little bit and then you exit the other side so I ran out of brown uh, BBs. I used to be an editor of an Airsoft magazine, so I had a bunch of these uh, in storage. So I actually went and used some gray BBs and some white BBs, and you know what? I'm calling mine the gravel pit because it kind of looks like gravel now, but this is just so cool. I mean, you just crawl up the ramp here, and then when you get down into the BBs, you know, the wheels start spinning, and then when you get towards the end especially, that's when you're trying to get up the, you know, the exit ramp, and then the BBs are just causing all sorts of havoc, but it goes up and over. Just so cool. I love this. But we got to talk about some of the other obstacles as well, and let's talk about the pipeline. So this one is super simple. I mean, you know, this is actually a lot of fun too. I got to move things around. So here's the pipeline, and it's actually a pretty challenging obstacle. Not to assemble. The hardest part really is just gluing the side panels down. Really easy to put together, but it's a really challenging obstacle like driving on a pipe it's a little bit narrow so if you don't get up on the obstacle just right you're gonna fall off the side so it's a very challenging obstacle it's one of the less expensive obstacles that they have but actually a lot of fun because it's very challenging finally we're gonna go over here and check out the valley 
So number one, the valley is a very cool obstacle once it's set up. Not only can you go across the bridge area here, but you could also set up your course to drive under each of the ends. And uh, number two, this it was the most difficult one to put together. This one's gonna take you time. I think it took me over three and a half hours and most of the time was spent getting the, the treads onto the wire. There's just a, a lot of pushing the wire through up and down the holes that are in the plates. But like the other obstacles, you have to go glue the side panels on. You gotta punch everything out. The mountains themselves have the thin treads like we saw on the wave obstacle that they released earlier this year. And so you gotta kind of set the plates together and push the little tabs in and you can't forget the cross plate. And then once you get everything together, you gotta slide it down into the feet. So that is a little bit of a challenge in itself. And then you get over to the plates and they actually have uh, a number of different plate setups for the, the bridge here. So I went with the most simple route, which is just a wire on each side with the wide planks. And the planks themselves, I actually had to go and drill out all the holes. They have laser etch where the hole needs to be, but I just found it easier to push the wire through if I went and pre-drilled everything. So uh, that's a little tip for you. The other tip is I went and soldered one end of the wires just so the wire wouldn't fray as I was pushing the, you know, the wire through each piece. And then to give the proper spacing, what I did is I took one tread and I just used it as a spacer between each tread that I was threading. So this has got to take a while. I think it was over an hour and a half just to get this bridge area together. But once it's done, it's very cool. Uh, you might have to do a little adjusting to the wire and it's just tied and looped around at the end. It's got some hooks that go onto the mountains themselves. And once it's done, guys, it's absolutely awesome. But there is kind of a downside that I need to tell you about because you know we've got plywood pieces on each end and plywood feet. And then when you roll your rig down the center, everything wants to slide together on you. So what I did here on my workbench is I drilled a hole in each foot uh, at the end of the mountain and put a screw through it so the mountains just stay on each end. And when I drive over it, the bridge doesn't collapse in the center. It's such a cool obstacle. I mean, I've been having so much fun driving over it. It, it can't go over too fast because you might go off the side, but I like how it wobbles around. And then just, you know, getting up the mountain themselves, that's a little bit of a challenge too. So this is a lot of fun. You know, if you have the space, if you have the ability to, to secure it somehow, I think it's gonna be awesome. You know, maybe just adding some two-sided tape to the bottom of the feet, just so it doesn't slide on whatever surface, maybe that would help it out. But uh, uh, it's gonna take some building time, but in the end, it's absolutely worth it. So I'll have links for these crawler tracks kits in the video description below. You know, with the cold weather rolling in, I think a lot of people are gonna be looking for something fun to do inside, have some mini crawler adventures, and these came out at just the right time, and they're gonna provide loads of fun. Now, there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys. They also came out with these wall hangers. One fits Axial, the other fits a Traxxas, and this is just a great way to go and store your rigs out of the way when you're not using them. I think I need a few more though.